knowledge and skills. They're responsible for a variety of activities and must be knowledgeable about them all. Line structures are most common in small businesses. The next, for as businesses get larger, they often adopt what's called a line and staff structure. This has a traditional line relationship between superiors and subordinates that relate to the production and activities of the company and the customer support activities of the company, direct line all the way to the top. But there's also specialized managers called staff managers that are available to assist line managers. They do the planning, the organizing, the back office support, those kinds of things, staff functions. They're available to assist the line managers. Line managers can then focus on their own areas of expertise in their operation and in the business. While the staff manager provide advice and support to line departments on specialized matters such as finance, financial modeling, decision making, engineering, human resources, and law. However, line and staff organizations may experience problems with overstaffing and ambiguous lines of communication. Additionally, employees may become frustrated because they lack the authority to carry out certain decisions because they have so many staff organizations who they have to interface with to get their buy-in or their sign-off, those kinds of things. Line and staff structure allows you to do some of the organizational thinking or planning separately from delivering services so it focuses activities that way, but that also causes potentially some inefficiencies. Let's take a look at a, at a figure of a line and staff organization. You could kind of see how this typically might work. In this particular case, we have a plant manager and a production manager. Production manager is the line where everybody, the employees report through supervisors to the production manager to the plant manager. But engineering has input to the production manager and may input impact the supervisors. Human resources likewise operate in these various staff functions. So you can see how that kind of process works. So you can see both the positives and the negatives associated with how such a structure is designed. We also have the multi-divisional structure. As companies grow and diversify, traditional line structures become difficult to coordinate, making com communication difficult and decision-making oftentimes slow. When weakness in the structure or the turf wars or silos, miscommunications and working across purposes, these can exceed the benefits in at times as growing firms tend to restructure. Often they structure into what's called a multi-divisional form. A multi-divisional form organizes departments into larger groups called divisions. Just as departments might be formed on the basis of geography or customer product or even a combination of these, so too divisions can be formed based upon any of these methods of organizing and some divisions can also be organized differently, making different choices based upon the preferences and of the management team and the needs of the marketplace. Multi-divisional structures permit delegation of decision-making authority, allowing divisional and department managers to specialize. However, the divisional structure inevitably creates work duplication, which makes it more difficult to realize the full economies of scale that work from grouping functions together as the organization gets larger. So you have the larger you get, the more economies of scale you have, but to make the organization function appropriately and be able to respond to changes in their individual marketplace and in their individual work sites, you end up having some inefficiencies that work against the economies of scale. The final type of structure we'll talk about is called the matrix structure. This is, uh, addresses issues that arise from growth and diversification, needs for productivity and competitiveness. This is called the matrix. The matrix structure also is also called a project management structure set up in teams. So you have administrative roles and you also have uh, the administrative support like your project managers or engineering, but you also have teams that are working on specific project. They're set up in as different departments, thereby they're creating two intersecting lines of authority. 
That's why it's called a matrix. On the one hand, you report to your administrative leader, the head of engineering, for example, if you're an engineer, but you're on a particular team, in which case you might be working for and report to a product manager or a, a, a project manager who's working on a particular project. Manuf uh, matrix organizations or matrix structures are very common in product development and technology companies because of the need to specialize skills and be supported in an organization that builds those skills, but those skills are then divided up among various projects going forward. And that's the matrix structure. Here's an example of what a matrix structure would look like on an organization chart. General manager has various functional things going on and each of them each of those functional groups work on specific projects that also report to project managers so this you have effectively two bosses here that's the matrix structure uh, in those you have these various teams which might report to different bosses so in the next lecture we'll talk about work groups and teams in organizations and how they're such an important part of delivering success in businesses in uh, in the modern corporation that's in our next